welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down this eight game MLB DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Before we get into the breakdown, if you guys do enjoy this content at any point in this video, if you please take a moment to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, that would be greatly appreciated. Work really hard on my content and all it takes is one second. It's free. Hit that subscribe button. It's going to help me greatly. And I'll be here all MLB DFS season breaking down these MLB DFS slates to help you guys become better MLB DFS players. Help you guys win some money night in and night out. And if you are interested in some further cons from me, I do offer a premium package. It's linked below in the description. You get access to all the same tools I use when building my own DFS lineups. If you are getting very serious about MLB DFS and you want to be a more profitable player, I would highly recommend that. And don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my home run call of the day. And with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start breaking down this slate today. As always, I like to go ahead and sort my sheet by K rate. It's fantasy sports. You get points for strikeouts. Figure out the top pitcher you want to talk about in this slate today, and then we will transition over to bats. Top guy on the slate today is going to be Walker Buehler taking on the Chicago Cubbies. Comes in with a 28% K rate overall, a 12% swinging strike rate. 28.8% K rate against righties and a 27.2% K rate against lefties. Very, very good across the board. And he's taking on a Chicago Cubs team tonight that has been one that has been striking out quite a bit. They only have a 3.05 implied run total. Bueller's recent form has been really good. He comes in at 11K on FanDuel over on DraftKings. They're going to price at 11.5. Looking at his last game against the Arizona Diamondbacks, 11 strikeouts, 108 pitches, and 7.1 innings pitches. That's what we're talking about as far as when it comes to DFS. If you can keep that up, that's going to make a lot of us very happy. So uh, I think that he's definitely one of the top options on the slate. The second guy you can be looking to is Luis Garcia. He gets one of the best possible matchups you could possibly ask for in the Detroit Tigers. 26.6% care overall, a 12.7 swing strike rate. 29.9% care rate against righties and a 22.7% care rate against lefties. So we do prefer to target him greatly against right-handed hitting, if at all possible. Does excel a lot better against those righties than those lefties. And looking at the Detroit lineup up and down today, you can see they are pretty blended as far as right-left is concerned. But they only do have a 3.82 implied run total. It's in Detroit, and there are 11 mile an hour wins going straight in from center. So uh, Luis Garcia comes in at 9.6 on FanDuel over on DraftKings. He's priced to 8.7. And, uh, you know, once again, that's... The best matchup you could really ask for, to be honest. So, like him, Jose Barrios taking on the Cleveland Indians. 24.1% carry overall, 24.3% carry against righties, and a 23.9% carry against lefties. Has been also a guy that has looked really good lately as far as his recent performances are concerned. You can see looking at the game log, last time out, he did allow three earned runs, but had six Ks. The time before, two earned runs, but he had eight Ks. So I think the Ks are starting to really climb up for Barrios, and he's gone six and seven innings pitch with 103 pitches last time out and then 99 the time before. So price at 10-4 over on DK as far as FanDuel is concerned. He comes in at 9K, so that's a nice little discount for you over on FanDuel. And the Cleveland Indians lineup really doesn't scare us all too much. They're a lineup that we've been seeing have a lot of weak opponents as of late, so you might be thinking they're hot, but... Uh, and I think that when they see a more talented arm, they can really have some issues. So Jose Barrios is definitely going to be an intriguing option today. And then we have Nick Pavetta taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. And this is when things start to get a little bit not so as interesting. I mean, Pavetta is probably my last guy that I'm really looking to on this slate that I'm getting all too excited about, to be honest with you. Um, and he comes in with a 23.7% carry overall, a 24.8% carry against righties, and a 22.3% carry against lefties. Uh, does give up quite a bit of hard contact. Does have some decent case up across the board. And he's taking on a Tampa Bay Rays lineup today. That does have its fair share of strikeouts, but the thing is, they're also getting a lot better. And with the addition of Juan Franco, I know it's only one bat, but this lineup is looking a lot scarier than it was before with that one bat in between with guys like Austin Meadows, Randy Rosarina. Uh, can go a long way at the top of the order specifically. And uh, they've been hitting the baseball very well these last couple games. So a little bit scary targeting Pavetta. He is a viable option. Uh, we'll see as far as the umpire in that game and uh, the expected K rates as far as Vegas is concerned. As far as the K props is something I always like to look to. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where things start to fade out a little for me, to be honest. I mean, we do have a few more guys that could be interesting, but... A little scary for me. You got Cody Petit, uh, Joe Ross taking on Miami is a possibility. He's priced way up on DraftKings, I believe. Yeah, it's 9-6 over on DraftKings. So when you look at his recent performances, I mean, he has had 
nine Ks, five Ks. Last time he only threw sixty-seven pitches. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what that implies because I don't think he was dealing with any injuries or anything. He threw one hundred eight times four, and then only sixty-seven. Five earned runs, so they must have just pulled the trigger on him early. Actually, I just answered my own question there. Sorry, but uh, yeah, Joe Rosso, he was stretched out last time. He gets to take on a Miami squad. That's one of the best ones that we could target for sure, similar to Detroit. Uh, and as mentioned, the pitch count down was, was down because of those five earned runs, so that makes sense. Uh, something wasn't lining up there, but um, yeah. So with that being said. The last guy I would maybe target would be Carlos Martinez taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. He has good ground ball fly ball stuff. His carry really hasn't been the greatest. He hasn't given up quite a bit of slugging this year. Honestly, he hasn't looked the greatest overall. He's 6-3 over on DraftKings. As far as his recent performance, he gave up eight earned runs to Atlanta. Atlanta, of course, is a tough matchup. The time before, he was able to give up only two earned runs to the Chicago Cubs. And he had six Ks. He had seven Ks the time before. So he's shown some K upside. Uh, he can be a little wild, a little unreliant at times, but I tend to think if there was ever a matchup for him to really excel, this could be the one. He comes in as a 152 favorite. It's in St. Louis, which is a great pitcher's park, and uh, we're not too scared about the Pittsburgh Pirates. So he'd probably be the last one that I'm looking to on this slate today, and actually, you know, not a terrible option for sure. So if you want to go to Carla Martinez on this slate, I think it, it could be the one to do so. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and transition over to bats. As always, I like to go ahead and sort my sheet by Sierra. Skill and our active ERA. It's a good way of determining how good a pitcher has been so far in his career and how good he's expected to be in the future. And one thing to note at the top here, we have Tony Santillan. I took him off my sheet because he has a very small sample size, but I can tell you from what we've seen out of him, he has been absolutely dreadful against right hand hitting. Lots of these, not as bad, but I mean, it really doesn't matter because we're dealing with like a seven innings pitch sample size. And overall, he just really hasn't been good. So uh, that's what you're dealing with when it comes to Tony Santillan. And uh, I think that the Braves stack could definitely be a viable one today. It's in Cincinnati, which is a great hitter's ballpark. We'll have to see what the total is. Um, but overall, just, you know, I think Atlanta's definitely going to be a viable stack. I just don't have his number popped because it's such a small sample size. Next guy that we want to talk about is Chad Poole taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Ground ball, fly ball stuff really isn't that great. Against righties, he gives up a 385 slugging. Apologies there. And then a 423 slugging to lefties. Uh, he's always been a guy that traditionally has really struggled against left-handed hitting. And unfortunately, the St. Louis Cardinals don't exactly have the most lefties in their lineup. They have Tommy Edmond, Dylan Carlson, uh, Matt Carpenter. But other than that, they're really all righties. So, you know, not exactly ideal as far as from a matchup standpoint. We really like a left-handed heavy lineup. But the St. Louis Cardinals still do have a 4.91 implied run total. Chad Cool really isn't that great overall. And uh, if it goes to the Pittsburgh bullpen, we're not really too worried about them either. So I think the St. Louis Cardinals are definitely a viable stack today. Zach Davies taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Really average stuff. Ground ball, fly ball stuff is not the greatest. He gives up a 416 slug into righties, a 379 slug into lefties. Actually has been a lot better against lefties than he has righties. So we do prefer to target him with right-handed bats. But overall, I think we can just target this guy all around with this Dodgers lineup tonight. Absolutely stacked lineup, of course, as we all know. And this guy doesn't really have the strikeout side stuff to get it past people. And that's going to be an issue when you're dealing with the Dodgers lineup. And you're allowing these guys to put their bat on the ball. You know, with elite talent like Mookie Betts, Max Muncy, Justin Turner, Cody Bellinger, Will Smith, Matt Beattie, Chris Taylor, Gavin Lux. Uh, that, that's going to create some issues for you. So we definitely like those Los Angeles Dodgers tonight. It looks like it's going to be around 70 degrees with 8 mile hour winds going out. That's not bad hitting weather at all in L.A. So like them. Jose Urena taking on the Houston Astros. Uh, you can see the carries were not that good. The ground ball flyball stuff has been good. But he still gives up a 378 slugging to righties and a 549 slugging to lefties. Specifically, really, really bad against left-handed hitting. And when looking at the Houston Astros lineup today, you know, they definitely have a few lefties that we can be targeting. Michael Brantley, Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker specifically. Those three, really going to like them. And then, of course, you can ride out your stacks with guys like Jose Altuve, Yuleski Gariel, Carlos Correa, Abraham Toro, Miles Straw, Marcy Maldonado. 5.68 implied run total. Jose Arena is really not good. And then once I get done with him, the Tigers bullpen is awful. So it's always a team that we're looking to target. The Houston Astros have been one of the hottest teams in baseball. Facing off against some pretty bad uh, Orioles pitching. And now they get to go in and take on pretty bad Detroit Tigers pitching. So I'm sure they're going to be continuing their fun in Detroit uh, with these matchups they keep getting. Dean Kremer taking on the Toronto Blue Jays has been a guy that we're really looking to target all season long. And he has to take on a Toronto Blue Jays lineup that we've also been looking to target all season long. And uh, just when they're getting healthy. Ground ball, fly ball stuff's terrible. A 534 slugging given up to righties. A 441 slugging given up to lefties. 
Honestly, this guy just gives up a ton of home runs. And um, that's going to be an issue when you are taking on a team like the Toronto Blue Jays. Does look like there's going to be 13 mile an hour winds blowing in from center, which is less than ideal. That's a little scary. In Buffalo, I believe it's a new uh, Toronto Blue Jays stadium, New York. I think it's Buffalo. Apologies if it's not, but um, you know this lineup is just absolutely loaded. We've taken on Dean Kramer, Marcus Semien, Bo Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Teoscar Hernandez, George Springer, Randall Grichik, Kavan Biggio, Loris Guerrero. The amount of power in this lineup is absolutely stupid, and uh, you know. It's just a tremendous lineup to be targeting. So, I'm sure, they're going to have some ownership. I'm sure it's going to be worth it. Dean Kramer, like I mentioned, really struggles with those uh, home run balls. The wind, I'll definitely have to keep an eye on. I mean, that's, that could be enough to deter some of these home runs that you would typically expect out of some of these bats. But the guy, the guy's going to give a lot of hard contact. So. Uh, Michael Waka taking on the Boston Red Sox this is a guy that's very easy to break down. He really struggles against right-handed hitting against lefties. He's really not that great either, but against righties is where he, uh, you know, really struggles. So these Boston Red Sox righties today, guys like J.D. Martinez, Xander Bogarts, Hunter Renfro are going to definitely be top of the list as far as the Red Sox stack is concerned. But don't forget about Rafael Devers and Alex Verdugo also because Michael Waka is really not that great across the board. And then, of course, you do have some great salary relief options in Danny Santana at the top. Uh, Enrique Hernandez, Bobby Dahlbeck at the bottom. Definitely be looking to stack up those Red Sox today. Uh, Joe Ross taking on Miami. I'm really not looking to target the Miami Marlins all too much, to be honest. The thing is about Joe Ross, if I'm looking to target him, I really do greatly prefer to target him with left-handed hitters. The Marlins don't really have a lot of left-handed hitters, and it's also in Miami, which is a terrible hitters park. I mean, Jazz Chisholm at the top of the order, if you want to use him as a one-off, could be a great play today. But other than that, I'm really not getting all too excited. Cody Petit taking on the Washington Nationals is a guy that gives up a bunch of hard contact to righties. Very, very bad against right-handed hitting. So these Washington Nationals righties, if you want to stack them up, wouldn't call you crazy. Trey Turner, Jan Gomes, Tarlon Castro, Josh Harrison, Victor Robles. It's not like he's all that great against lefties, but to be honest with you, he does a great job of limiting the hard contact in the slugging compared to righties, and it's not nearly as interesting. Uh... Carlos Martinez taking on Pittsburgh. Your lineup's just really not that good. If you're going to target him, it's with right-handed hitting, and he still does give up a great amount of ground balls, so I'm not too interested there, to be honest. Anthony Kay taking on Baltimore could be a guy that you're looking to target for sure. He does give up a 364 slugging to righties. Doesn't really strike anyone out. The ground ball fly ball stuff's pretty good, but against the lefties, he's actually really, really bad um, as far as hard contact is concerned, which is a little ironic because he is a left-handed hurler himself, but that just happens to be the case with him, so... Uh, Cedric Mullins at the top of the order could be a guy that's maybe a sneakier play than some may know of. The rest of the lineup is pretty much right-handed and switch hitters, so can definitely still stack up these Orioles, I would say. I mean, Michael Kay's, I mean, Anthony Kay isn't exactly Michael Kay. Anthony Kay isn't exactly the uh, the most loaded talent out there on the, the bump, so. Next on the list is Nick Pavetta taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Another guy that gives a bunch of hard contacts. We mentioned possibly pitching him, but also you could definitely stack against him, to be honest. 473 slugging given up to righties, a 497 slugging given up to lefties, and the way this Rays offense has been going. Wouldn't be surprised to see them have a pretty large run total today. Uh, Brandon Lau, G Man Choi, Juan Franco, Austin Meadows, Randy Rosarina, Joey Wendell, Manny Margot, Kevin Kiermeyer, up and down the slide. Looks great. Specifically through the one through the five spot is where things are really looking juicy now with Franco in that lineup, as I mentioned. And uh, I wouldn't have any issues with you targeting Pavetta. And then once we get past him, it becomes pretty clear. I mean, you have J.C. Mejia taking on Minnesota and Luis Garcia taking on Detroit. Both of those guys, uh, you're really looking to target with left-handed hitting. So if you want to target them, uh, Detroit, you really want to play all the lefties if you're stacking them up. And then Tomlin, you're going to want to play all the lefties on Cincinnati if you're really looking to target. Actually, no, I'm sorry, not Tomlin. Uh, J.C. Mejia, as far as Minnesota is concerned, you're going to want to play all the lefties on Minnesota. And uh, looking, they have a 5.04 implied run total. And Trevor Lenark, Max Kepler, Alex Swirloff, you know, plenty of power to go around there with a 5.04 implied run total. And then lastly, Josh Tomlin taking on the Cincinnati Reds um, is a guy that we can definitely be looking to target. He's not really good at all if it's truly going to be Josh Tomlin. Uh, I definitely think I'm going to like these Reds quite a bit. Ground ball fly ball stuff's not good. The hard contact stuff's not good. He gives up a 487 slugging to righties and a 426 slugging to lefties. And the Reds lineup is just absolutely stacked. Jonathan India, Jesse Winker, Nick Castellanos, Tyler Naquin, Joey Votto, Eugenio Suarez. 
uh, all of the above. Really going to like the Reds as well as a stack. There's plenty of offenses to go around on this slate. We've talked about many good options. And uh, with that being said, before I let you guys go, i got to give you my home run call of the day. Let's get into it. And my home run call of the day today is going to be Teoscar Hernandez taking on Dean Kramer. We had mentioned his hard contact issues, giving up a lot of home runs this season. A 534 slugging given up to Rays with a 374 Wova, 40.5% fly ball rate, not going to get the job done. Only a 19.6% K rate against those right-handed hitters. And when specifically breaking down what he throws, very reliant on the fastball, about a 93 mile an hour fastball 50% of the time. Oscar Hernandez features a 341 ISO with a 390 Woba against that pitch, and the secondary pitch very reliant on the curveball. Hernandez crushes that pitch as well. A 389 ISO with a 379 Woba. Love this spot for Teoscar Hernandez. Get him in your lineups because he is my home run call of the day. So there you have it guys, T. Oscar Hernandez, get him in your lineups, and that is all from me in this one. If you did enjoy the content, if you could please take a moment to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and the notification bell, that would be greatly appreciated. I wish you guys all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.